Unsponsored content. content. That's what it is. Sorry, it's late here. Unsponsored content. I'm Aaron Baker. I'm joined by my co-host, my former colleague, my current friend, Noah Kravitz. At Noah Kravitz on Twitter, I'm at Aaron C. Baker on Twitter. I don't think you get to talk anymore, man. You've had one too many. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know one too many of what, but something. Yeah, exactly. It's like when I forgot the name of the podcast. That was a challenge. That was a challenge. Like, hey, good evening. Good afternoon. How is everybody? <laughs> I'm like, what the what's heck are we like doing here? South Asia. Why am I here? What's going on? Yeah, um, exactly. How's Texas? Texas is great. You still, how's California? You still married? Uh, this week, yeah. Congratulations. Uh, Thank Cal- you. California is delicious. We we got a little tiny bit of rain this morning, Ooh, nice. which uh, I mean, let's face it, we're all screwed. Um, and you know, when the the water. No, never mind. Why, why be pessimistic? But uh, every little drop helps, so it was nice to get a little rain this morning. It's going to make the kale leaves grow big and strong. I had a nice dino kale and chicken salad yesterday, I thought of you. Amazing. That sounds awful. It, I was, mean, I'm good. it was delicious. I enjoyed it very yeah. much. I love All chicken. Right. Let's, get r- kale. let's get right to brass tacks, because I have a feeling you're not going to last very long. Oh, I'm totally going to last a long time. You make me sound like a drunk. No, I didn't say, you know... Um, I have had one beverage. Let's, maybe two. Let's, uh, what do you want to start with? Let's kick it off with the Microsoft Lumia stuff that we talked about. I think that's a, huge, a great thing to start with. All right. So uh, uh, the old uh, Microsoft uh, launched a uh, telephone there, the Lumia 950, and it was roundly met with moderately negative reviews. Along the lines of, you know, this is interesting. Too bad nobody is going to care. Um, there's a, uh, I read, I read a few of the reviews there, and uh, well, here's the deal with this phone. So this phone, it's the first, um, it's the first premium phone that Microsoft has launched since they laid me off um, about uh, a year ago now. Is that the reason why it's not a great phone? I don't think so. I think the two are separate. Um, but, you know, karma is a uh, is the thing. Um, yeah, so Microsoft acquired Nokia, and, um, and this is the first premium device that they've launched since the acquisition of Nokia. And the thing about this phone is it runs... I want to say full-on Windows 10, Windows 10, but there's a couple asterisks next to that. So it runs Windows 10, and it's the same Windows 10, you know, sort of in, in spirit as the Windows 10 that runs on desktops and laptops and flip tops and touch books and ultra swags and whatever. Um, but it has a, a mobile, a mobile optimized UI with it, and and the thing with this phone is um, you can buy a separate accessory a dock, and you plug the phone into a dock, and then uh, you can hook it up to a keyboard and a mouse and all that stuff. So it, it actually reminds me of the old uh, Moto Atrix that was such a huge hit that revolutionized God, everything. Memories. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I, I wound up with a stack of those in my old office from a giveaway gone awry. It's funny you say that. I'm pretty sure I found the, what was the laptop companion thing. I think yeah. I found that when we were unpacking boxes at some point several years ago. Yeah, yep. Um, Which is totally useless without the phone itself, and I don't have the phone. So I'm like, hey, here's a useless piece. Of, you, it's a screen and a keyboard. Yeah, you know what? wasn't wasn't all that much more useful with the phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true. So the, um, you know... You but text with a keyboard. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you, can, you can up your chances of getting stopped by airport security. Um, the thing about the 950, and I've, I've read this uh, in several of the reviews, is that, like, 
not all of the Windows 10, like it doesn't support Windows 10 desktop apps, but not all of the mobile apps will run when you're plugged into the desktop. So like uh, Joanna Stern has a nice review on on Wall Street Journal on their website with a nice, little, a l nice little animated GIF that shows uh, the multiple stages of docking. And, um, That's a topic for another debate. You call it GIF, not GIF. No, I said that just to get your goat. Episode 4. Just to jet your joke. Huh. Um, but apparently, like, the, it's like, it doesn't support all of the regular desktop apps, but then when you're in desktop mode, it doesn't support all of the mobile apps. So, like, she used the example of Spotify. You can't control it from the desktop while you're plugged into the dock, but you can run it on the phone and then do other stuff on the desktop mode. It just sounds like, it sounds like an arguably interesting idea that all you need is a phone. You don't need a laptop, you don't need a desktop, just carry your phone around, whatever. Um, not very well executed, and then does absolutely nothing to solve the same problem that Microsoft has had ever since um, the first iPhone and then Android, which is that there, there's just a, a horrible lack of popular apps for the Windows mobile ecosystem. Um, it's been a problem, and it continues to be a problem, and you know, this um, Windows 10 Continuum thing looks like it does not solve the problem. No, I could see it as a building block going forward. Um, and so I will, I will hold off on the uh, pack it in stamp of disapproval just yet. But uh, I don't know, not, there's not a lot other than, you know, Microsoft's built-in ecosystem of legacy users of, you know, Windows on the desktop. There's not a whole lot that's making me optimistic about um, Microsoft's mobile future here. So call me crazy, but the way I look at it is I tend to think that they're doing this with tablets and with phones. They're trying to make the phone too much of a computer instead of having it complement the computer, and I think that's one of the critical flaws. Call me crazy if you disagree. No, I don't disagree. Um, I, I think it's that, and it's, and it's the lack of apps. Exactly, yeah, I agree. Um, and if, you know, if they had made it, I mean, that's always been Microsoft's thing, right? Their problem in, in, since mobile really took hold is that they just tried to shove desktop windows into a phone and it, it just was never meant to do that. Um, you know, remember the, the old, uh, windows, what did they call it? Windows mobile way windows back in the day? Back in the day. And then it was windows phone started with seven. Right. Okay. And then it was, they switched it again, and then switched it back to Windows. Back to um, Windows like, Mobile. Or Windows so, Mobile, sorry, yeah. So you remember the old Windows Mobile phones, those old, you know, HTCs and iMates and whatever else, oh, yeah. where you would literally have, like, you know, the, the C colon file directories on your little three-inch screen. And at the time, it was, like, well, better than nothing if you, you know, needed to be so-called productive on the go. But really just kind of a hot mess. And, and I think, you know, to your point, or if this wasn't your point, then I will take your point and twist it to fit my own devious purposes. Um, you know, it's the same thing. They're, they're trying to, trying to make it too much like a computer. Um, but it's just not, it's just not quite there. Well, and it goes back to what we talked about in previous episodes. Is that, you know, it's like if I wanted a computer and wanted to use the functionality of a computer, I would use the computer. I have a phone for internet purposes, for email purposes, for text messaging, phone calls, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, it has specific purposes that I use it for. And I think that that's what they're trying. They're trying to bridge the gap too much as opposed to having things on the device, like continuity we've talked about in the past with iOS, things that complement the experience but don't necessarily replace the computer. What, um, where, what's, where's your line? Where do you, and your line I think is different than mine, um, where do you go, what, what activities, what, um, well, no, not functionality, what activities make you reach for one device versus the other? If it's anything that involves a lot of typing, so e long emails, e browsing, writing, anything that's extensive typing, I would go to the computer. Anything that's multimedia driven or perhaps some short typing, looking up a website really quickly, checking Twitter, Facebook, that's all phone for me. So you watch but, porn yeah. on the phone? <laughs> just no tablet that's what tablets oh tablet right right yeah. good point yeah 
bigger um, display and mobile functionality. No, I'm just kidding. This is uh, this is unsponsored content after dark. If you're not following, be sure to. No, I'm just kidding. No, I was going to read something from uh, from this review, but there's not even a point. Forget it. Well, I mean, what, what's your use case? Do you? I, I know we've talked about it in the past with like the iPad Mini type things and, and, and phones, etc. But what's your use it's, case for a phone versus computer? It's pretty similar. Um, it, uh, it it comes down to typing. I think I am more reticent to reach for my laptop than you are. I think is what we were talking about before. Right. Um, but I um. Yeah, if I need to. I was gonna say if I need to get something done, that's not quite right. I guess it's mostly comes down to like if I need to input a lot of a lot of text. And there are a small handful of good mobile apps like I can do like for some reason banking came to mind and I can even though I need to input stuff, um I mean, not like a lot. I'm not. Well, like, that's something where you don't want to screw up. One zero makes a big difference. So well, like that keyboard comes in handy. No, I was gonna say I'll do that on the phone. Okay. Um, um, short emails, you know, I'll do on the phone. Um, yeah, the you know, I don't, I don't do as much uh, multimedia creation these days as I used to, and that used to be kind of the big. The big thing was um, that kept me on the on the computer on the laptop a lot was uh, you know video editing or audio editing that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, and obviously the editing capabilities of the computer make that a far better proposition as opposed to a phone or even a tablet. Even though now there's you know iMovie for your yeah. device for your iOS device. Yeah. Now, I remember when that was a thing. So So yeah, I would agree with you. So editing, any of that type of stuff. I still do it a little bit in my both in my current job and then any for side projects, et cetera. But that and typing would be the two things that cost me a lot of time. Um, you know, I wonder, uh So this is the last paragraph of, of Joanna's uh review here, or the last two paragraphs. If phones will, and I quote, if phones will one day replace our computers, we're going to choose the phones with the apps and services we already love. Unfortunately for Microsoft, right now those are iPhones and Android phones, which already work great with Microsoft's own apps and services. It feels like the Lumia 950 is a proof of concept that might help Microsoft get momentum for its new strategy, but I can't recommend buying a $600 proof of concept. For now, your phone stays a phone. Um, and then, of course, the first comment is, I don't understand why the WSJ would let an Apple fangirl like Joanna go anywhere near this topic. Which... <laughs> As your iPhone goes off. This yeah. segment sponsored by iPhone. Which, you know... <sighs> Man, this is why... I have this, to why agree with that, this is I'm why I got out of not, being... Not the comment, but I, her, the end of her article. I have to agree with that. I mean, yeah. that's... Sorry, I read the rest of the comment, and it made me ga. I don't know if you heard me sigh, whatever that noise was, yeah. It was one of those humanity sighs. Like, that, oh, that's internet. what made me, it made me get out of internet punditry, those comments. Um, yeah, I just, you know, I, I'm sort of fascinated by, there's a new breed of devices. There's one called the Kangaroo. It's like 99 bucks, and it's, you know, kind of roughly, it's like larger than a thumb drive, smaller than a phone, and it's a full-on Windows PC. And, um... You can just carry it around, and it's got, you know, I think it's got an HDMI port and Bluetooth and a Wi-Fi chip built in, and uh, I think a micro SD slot maybe. And so essentially, like, you just carry that, and wherever you're going, it's got your stuff on it, it's got your settings, you know, whatever, and you just plug it into a monitor and a keyboard and, and a mouse, and off you go. Um, but it's hard for me to see that kind of thing gaining any sort of mainstream ad adoption. Again, yeah, I mean, yeah, for me, it's, it goes back to the tablet argument I made in one of the previous episodes. It's like all of these things are great, and they're great middle ground between a, a phone and a computer or a laptop, desktop, whatever. But I don't really, for me personally, don't see the use case. If I if my phone works great, if I need more serious or need a computer for more serious stuff, I'll pull out my computer. I don't need the, the tablet, per se, or the computer that's for light email and web browsing, but nothing else. So... Maybe there's a market for it, just for my personal use case. It's it's kind of one or the other. I don't really see the need for the middle ground. All right. With the exception of maybe multimedia. Moving on. Moving um, on. Couple, this is a couple weeks ago now, but a couple weeks ago we didn't have a show, so, you know, we're catching up. A couple weeks ago there were a couple of reports 
on the interwebs. Uh, I think they were first sourced to a website called The Information. Um, rumors that Google uh, may be both um, either starting to develop or considering develop planning to develop their own chips and then also to build their own smartphones, presumably using these, these chips. Um, so Aaron Baker, a twofold question to you. Uh, number one, your answer doesn't matter at all because you're just wildly speculating. Do you think there's any truth to this? Number two, and more importantly, do you think that would be a good idea or a bad idea for Google to do to build their own smartphones using their own chips? Is it a good, or a good idea or a bad idea? I would say short term, maybe it's a good idea. There are plenty of Android OEMs out there. It just seems like it's going to be a continuation. And again, not being able to see with a crystal ball, I don't know if they're going to launch this device and at some point in the future say, okay, that's it. We're the only group that's going to make an Android device. It's going to be in-house from start to finish, much like the Apple process. But to me, the challenge I see with this is it's great if they make a device, it's great if they make chips, it's great if they build this device from scratch, but at the end of the day, the, app, the ecosystem is still open, and devices are still being made by other OEMs. And so it's not that closed loop that drives a ton of business on the Apple side. So I don't really see what the business benefit is from here, other than perhaps having a chipset supply chain where at some point in the future that could come in handy. I just don't see the... I just don't see the meat of the, the business proposition, if that makes sense. I mean, it's different than, I mean, even Microsoft's doing it right now as they're phasing out Microsoft uh, Windows mobile devices and they're focusing more on the Lumia platform, but the <coughs> is not quite there. This is an entirely different story with multiple OEMs working on Android, and it's just, it's still too open. It just don't, I, I don't see where it's going to go, at least in the short term. What about you? Um, I think that they absolutely should do it and they should do it in a way such that the other OEMs get no like no useful heads up that this is coming but then when it actually launches it's painfully clear that that will be the only hardware that matters going forward. And so then all of those OEMs who signed up for the Android Open Cha-Cha Alliance way back when are just like unequivocally screwed. But would where be... would they be screwed? I mean, is it, if they're making chipsets, they're making hardware, it's probably going to be on par with Samsung, LG, and no. that are high end. No, it wouldn't be. See, that's the whole thing. And I was being, I was being a little bit facetious there. So, um, no, that's the whole thing is that it, the only reason to do this is so that they would perform much better. They would outperform anybody else because Google would... I mean, the whole Apple thing is that they tune the hardware and the software to work together. And so they're maximizing the code base of the OS. They're maximizing you know, the way the chip architecture, the way the chips are designed. They're maximizing all of the, all of the hardware, the industrial design, all the components, everything. They're maximizing it to get the best possible combination of design and performance. I think we, so we agree, but I think we disagree on a part of it. I think that it'd be nearly impossible to do that without them directly going to the OEMs and saying, okay, as of now, you are no longer, or whenever, end of the year, or end of three years, whatever the agreement is, you're no longer allowed to use Android. No, that's what I'm I saying. That was, that was the whole, that was my whole, like, joke that was so dry, you didn't even know it was a joke. I didn't even get it. It would be Gosh. just, it would be classic Google Right. To not do that, and We're then go just ahead and sunset our OEM partners. Yeah, and just yeah. screw them. Just yeah. screw them all so hard. I mean, and they're kind of do that now. I mean, the Nexus program effectively does that, just on a much smaller scale, because the OEMs don't know when they're going to get, you know, when they're going to get the the updates to the software and what they're going to have to do to patch their own versions to fix and everything, et cetera, et cetera, and so. You know, for Google to, I mean, the, the joking, the snarky joking aside about, you know, sunsetting the OEMs with no warning, like, in a way, I think it would make the most business sense if Google wanted to be a hardware maker. And I think that's Google's whole problem, or one of their whole problems is like, they have so much cash, they have so many resources that they're not really committed to doing anything all that well. And I can, you know, if we had any listeners, I could see the fan, the hate mail, like, lining up here. But, like... We'll get it, I promise. You know, since Search 
and Gmail. Like, what have they done that's really been done all that well? Well, and, that's what's interesting. They want to get away from that. They've been pretty candid about it. About what? At least search, getting away from search, being the primary revenue driver. Well, that's what I'm saying, though, is that they've dabbled in all these things, but, you know, aside from Android, I mean, Android is, is objectively successful. Um, I don't know that I would say that it's, you know, that it's excellent um, in part just because of the, the fragmentation and all that stuff to me is like a big part of why what something that's holding it back. But, you know, Google certainly has the resources to say, hey, you know what? We're going to get serious about, about smartphone hardware. We're going to design our own chips. We're going to do it ourselves. It's going to be a big thing, et cetera, et cetera. And if they did that, that would, you know, that would potentially do more to end fragmentation and to elevate the Android experience than anything else could at this point because they, are, they control the software. So I think Apple has shown that controlling the software and the hardware is a winning formula if you can execute. Um, yeah, and not be, not because of this is not an Apple co comparison. I just there's nothing there's nothing to show that Google can do that with a consumer product. They have not had that I can think of a home run consumer product that they've developed. Google TV, Android TV, that hot mess Google Nexus Q right. music player thing. Like none of those were were successful by any by any measure. So, you know, I don't know if they could pull it off, but I do think that, you know, doing that, essentially eliminating the Samsung, you know, Samsung, HTC, all those companies from the game, I'd be, I'd certainly, from the sidelines, I think it'd be really interesting. Um, it's hard for me to see them doing it just because I don't think Google, I don't have any inside, you know, anything on this. I just, I don't think Google wants to go all in on anything. Uh, yeah. you know, and I don't think they want the support that or they want to start the support that comes with going all in from start to finish with everything. Yeah. That's yeah. the sense I get. Um, but that said, I think they should do it, you know, cause they, or, or do that and leave the, the low end market, which is where the money is anyway, um, to the OEMs. But you know, then they, what would the argument be? Would it be like, you can only do a certain to OEMs. Could you only do a certain, spec set and then anything above that is no i think illegal. i think the argument would just be that like our house phone is going to kick your phone's asses so badly that you'd be foolish to keep building high-end phones like I, mean, they, I wouldn't see that as any different than the nexus program right now well because Maybe they don't more consumer marketing behind it it's i mean in a way it's not but i think that building having control over the chips developing everything integrated start to finish. I think that's that's the level up. And and you can't get that working with an OEM partner. I mean, maybe I just don't see it unless the switch, the key switch is Android on off, giving people access or not giving them access. Because at the end of the day, there are a couple of chip manufacturers, there are, are a couple of other manufacturers for various component displays, etc. There's only one Android. Well, no, there's so like... There's like 18,000 Androids. Oh, the fragmentation joke. You're so yeah. funny tonight. I think so. Huh? You're good. Oh. I like it. You're pretty snappy at, what is it, 950? Yeah, well, you know. Um, yeah, I don't think they're going to do it. Um, I don't either. But I, I think it would be fun. But hey, I've been wrong before. If they did. Maybe wrong again. No. I should, uh, we should move on. All right. What is the next thing? Uh, the next oh, thing. Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Let's talk turkey. Let's talk turkey. What are you eating? Not uh, right now, but for. On Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving? Uh, you know traditional uh, traditional Thanksgiving meal: the, the bird and the and the potatoes and the salads and the cranberries and the pies and all that stuff. We are too, and I tried to get family to make brisket, and they said they didn't want to this week, which makes me very sad. I'm actually not a huge traditional Thanksgiving food fan. And so I'll eat a little bit of turkey, a little bit of stuffing, but that's about it. Maybe some cranberry. Mm. That's all. I'm making, uh, I'm making some, I'm making some pie. Ooh, what kind of pie? Uh, I'm gonna make a pumpkin pie because uh, I only bring out that high pitched voice when I'm really excited. Ooh. Um, yeah, it's not. I'm not traditionalist about a lot of stuff. Maybe I am more than I realize. But I, I like, I like pumpkin pie on Thanksgiving, and 
Uh, I think I'm the only one in the family who really likes the pumpkin pie. Ergo, I have to make it. But so that's, that's a fine. brilliant idea, though, because that means all the pie is for you. Yeah, you know what's not a good idea is all the pie being for me. Oh, you know, that's what running's for, I guess. <laughs> 13 mile run the next day. <laughs> if I tried to run 13 miles right now, I would not make it. I'd be like, buddy, where are you? It's Thursday. Time for our next episode. Hey, guy. Guy. Um, but anyway, yeah, Black Friday, Cyber Monday deals. We were going to talk about that a bit, which there are quite a few this round. Is it really? It, maybe, you know, maybe it's just me and where I'm at in my life, but, well, uh, it's fine, because I, I was going to say it doesn't excite me anymore, except that there is one deal I have my eye on that I may actually may actually try to purchase, so... So was I should headphones, just. Or was that somebody else I was talking to? Uh, no. Wait, did you say headphones? No, yeah. not me. Okay. No. Um. Uh. T-Mobile on Cyber Monday is gonna do, uh. Upgrade free upgrade the memory on your iPhone. So like. That's right. You know, you buy the 16 gig and you get the 64 gig for the same price. And uh, we talked about this last week, I think. That, you know, I'm in the process of considering switching carriers, and I priced it all out, and to get, you know, we have two lines, each has the iPhone with 64 gigs, and I also get a discount through work on my service from AT&T. And to move that over to T-Mobile, um, it, if you don't include the upfront cost, which is $100 each to get the 64 gig iPhone, because Apple won't ship an entry-level model with a decent amount of ROM in it, jerks. Um, the 16 gigabyte iPhone is just, it's insulting. Oh, it's a joke. It's a yeah, joke. 16 gigabytes is a joke. And with no expandable storage is a joke in today's world. It's so, it's, I don't have any problem with the no expandable storage. I think that's a ship that sailed, and nerds like you, no, okay. No, well, so the difference with Android, and then I'll move on, is at least in the later versions of Android, you can install apps on the expandable storage. So there is more ability the, than just photos. The expandable storage that is available on what phones these days? It's getting less and less. Because the, new, the Galaxy way. S's don't have it. Do what they? About the, do the HTC ID ones? The um, one, two, three, four, five. The yes, what? they do. What now? The HTC ones do, yes. They do, okay. Yeah, I was yeah. making a sarcastic joke about some random OEM, like, in, I don't know, London or something. The 10234? The 10234 that's available for forty nine ninety nine at CVS. Do you ever try those uh, those OnePlus phones? I have played with them. I've never owned one. Um, same. And I have a friend who owned the OnePlus One. And uh, said that the quality control, the build quality on his phone was terrible. Um, so and many I, people love those. But I said that on the internet, and several people wrote back and were like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I've had mine, and it's great, and blah, blah, blah. So I don't know. Um, well, anyway, so back to expandable story. I agree with you. I mean, there's a lot of options for the cloud now. But the challenge I have is, like, even at 16 gigabytes, I don't want to continuously have to back up to the cloud to make sure that my device has enough storage to, A, run fast, and, B, have enough room for maybe a trip or whatever or oh, I may you, not have the opportunity no agreed I, I bought the 16 gig iPhone 6 and inside of I think it was inside of one week definitely inside of two weeks I was out of I was out of room I couldn't take photos I believe it and um, and uh, that's what happens when you store a lot of porn on your phone yeah it's true um, and that's not even 3D immersive porn it's just the, reg the regular stuff the old stuff um, yeah so I had to get the 64 and, um, anyway, so, so when I was pricing out switching carriers, even before that hundred dollars times two plus tax, you know, up front, 250 bucks up front, like I was only going to be saving I don't know, eight bucks a month moving from AT&T to T-Mobile. Um, but because they're running this deal, it might just be worth it. Um, if, you know, if only for the fact that I can get a new phone because, um, mine might have lost some functionality after being dropped in um, a decently large quantity of water some months ago. Ah, uh, toilet. Yeah. So. I hate when that happens. So yeah. So I'm looking at that deal. Um, it's, it's a funny story. Sidebar. Fun, funny yeah. story. Huh. When I had the Note Five, I had the 32 gigabyte version, and the reason that I had that is I went to the store. They didn't have 64 gigabytes. I was like, I want a new phone today, and so I got the Note Five and 32 gigabytes. 
I was always stressed and had anxiety at the end of the day about what happens if I run out of storage, even at 32 gigabytes. So when I switched to the iPhone 6S Plus, I went to the 64 gigabyte version. One, because there's no 32 gigabyte. But the main reason was because I was worried about running out of space. Well, why didn't you get the 128? I, that was beyond what I knew I would use. Okay. I knew I sit about 35 to 36 after about a year. So that's where I wanted a 64 gigabyte. Yeah, 64 seems like plenty. Um, I have a friend who has a 128, but he wanted it specifically to fit like his entire active rotation music collection. And he right. knew exactly how many gigabytes he needed and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, 64 seems like plenty for me. So, yeah, so there's that deal. Some of the big box retailers are offering like $200, $250 gift cards if you buy a new iPhone on an installment plan, but T-Mobile's not included. Okay. Going back to last week, I actually priced out because I was curious about Sprint. Um, I could save a ton of money switching to Sprint, but the problem is I won't be able to make phone calls or use data. Okay, I don't know Service if it's that, that extreme. But I did, I mean, I did some research, and I, I was hard-pressed to find any favorable comments about Sprint. And there was actually uh, somebody on the old uh, tweeters there uh, this I week said something about how he actually lives, because we said something on the show about, like, well, maybe if you live in Kansas City, it's Sprint oh, headquarters. Oh, yeah, and he was like, I live right at the campus of Sprint. Service is great. Not. Oh, it wasn't great? Yeah, no, service okay. is terrible. <laughs> okay, I must have read it wrong. Yeah, here, let me let me make sure. I don't want to, um, enough people are going to get sued for slander. I don't want, you know, the wrong people to. Anyway. Um, and also, I, we should call out, if you do have sprint comments, great coverage, terrible coverage, anything in between, let us know on Twitter at UnspawnCon. UnspawnCon. What to say? Uh, how do you get to the part... Tweets and replies. What's oh. interesting, while you're doing that, what's interesting to me about Sprint is it, and I've used it plenty of times, it's, it works extremely well in the Dallas area as long as you're in the city proper. I think where it gets challenging for me is when you're anywhere in the rural areas of Texas, it dies. This is what he said. I would lightly say Sprint works well in Kansas City, especially if you work by their campus like I do where speeds suck. Switch to Timo three years ago. What is lightly? I think the way he used lightly is, like, tread lightly, be careful saying okay. that, because, for me, anyway, it sure doesn't. I would lightly say that I hate, I hate Kale. So you like Kale? No, 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 I don't. I thought that was, maybe I worded it wrong. I'm just going to keep saying I hate Kale. You should stop talking. But I'd love to talk. Oh, all right, well then, uh, are there any, any, oh, right, so just to finish the thought, um, so there are a couple of uh, those big stores that have, like, I could go get the phones on Sprint. The bill would come out to about 95 bucks a month. I think that's before taxes. So let's call it one, 105 110 as compared to about $180 uh, otherwise. And then a $250 gift card, I think per phone. So it'd get back like 500 bucks in gift cards. Um, that's, a, you know, that's like you're talking about a savings of, uh, you know, over, what, $1,500 over the course of a year? Well, and what if you did it and didn't port your numbers and tried it for their period before you, or their return period, rather? Uh, are you asking if I get to keep the gift cards? I'm guessing probably not. No, no, no. If you try and return it, no. But I'm saying try it for 30 days. Don't port your numbers so you're not, you know, you're a little less hooked. And then just return them if you don't like the service. But I, I don't get to keep the gift cards. Right, yeah, you wouldn't be able to keep those but at least you'd be able to see how the service works. But I couldn't keep the gift cards. You can just mail them to me. Will you send me the cash? No, but I, I, will, I promise I will mail them back if you return service. They should run a, a promo where if you try Sprint and don't like it, Aaron Baker will send you money. Ooh. All right. All right. Any, uh, are you going to... Are you gonna buy some deals on the old uh, the old shopping fest days? I don't know. You know what's funny? I love. I'm one of like the five people left in the world that actually like shopping in brick and mortar stores. I hate the wait online, buying something and waiting two or three days because I'm an instant grat kind of guy. But I hate shopping on Black Friday. I hate the crowds. I hate dealing with lines. I hate avoiding punches and such when I'm you know walking out with the last Xbox. So I'm gonna avoid it. And I'm also out in East Texas on Friday. So. 
Which means what? Way out in rural, rural Texas. So you, there's no, no no Best Buys. No deals. No Best Buys within an hour. What can you get a deal on in East Texas? DQ. Dairy Queen. Yeah. You think they're doing it? You like a Blizzard? Half off a Blizzard? I mean, you didn't have to give me half off a Blizzard. Any Blizzard is a deal to me. They still sell what's it called? The Brazer. They still have the Brazer Burger. I'm no, I don't think so. Oh. All right. Um, I go for the Blizzard. You know what I think it's time for. Strips. It's time for a lightning round. I would like to get like a sad garage band to open our show and future shows. You mean like garage band for Windows 10? Uh, funny. Okay. Funny go ahead. You Hold go on. first. What? So mail on iOS. Do you use it or not and why? Um, I have two iOS phones. One I use Mail. The other one I use Google Gmail. Did you say Google Gmail? Yeah, Google Gmail. Okay. And um, you mean Alphabet Google Gmail? Yeah, Alpha Google. Um, I use El Diablo by El Diablo. Um, I use iOS Mail because it comes on the phone, and. It works well enough, so, like, why... I, I'm, I've am i never been one to want to spend a lot of time tinkering with something unless there's a really good reason to... A really compelling reason. Um, and, like, for as much as I like phones and gadgets and all that stuff, I don't actually like spending a lot of time customizing them. So, you know iOS Mail has always been on the device right out of the box, so I've always just used it. The phone that I use the uh, Google Mail Gmail by Google on is my work phone, and uh, there was a, a bug of some sort that messed up. Um, I don't remember exactly what, but it messed up something to do with mail and contacts and calendars and such. And so... As a temporary workaround, I put uh, Google G Google Mail, Gmail, and then also Google's calendar app on my device. Uh. And I've just kept using them. And the, um, the calendar app I kept using <laughs> because <laughs> when I would make a calendar thing, like to meet somebody for coffee, it would show me a picture of coffee. And I was like, oh, that's nice. That's so, cute. yeah. It knows you. I've heard um, I've heard that Outlook for iOS is quite delicious, but I have not used it. it too. The, the two things I miss the most about Android, now this is your question, but the two things I miss the most... The Wait, name, hang on, name, stop. Name nope, nope, you said it's my question. Here's oh, my yeah, question. Go ahead. All right, Aaron, what are the two things you miss most about Android? I'm glad, you, oh, I'm glad you asked. I'm ready to tell you. The two things I miss most about Android, the native Gmail app on Android was 100,000 million times better than the Gmail app on iOS, and I feel like mail misses a ton of functionality around Gmail or Google Apps, pull, or excuse me, push email, et cetera, et cetera. Number two, I miss all of the integration with Google services, so Google Drive, Keep, et cetera. And yes, you can download the applications, but the integration just isn't quite as tight. I use Hangouts every day for work, for personal, and just the ability to attach a picture outside of the app itself, you don't have that in iOS. You I can't. Go into the app. I can't stand Hangouts. Really? Like. I used to hate it. Now I'm okay with it. With like nine updates. It's gotten. It's gotten better. The UX has gotten better over. I used you to know. Really hate it too. Only took them like twelve years. Um, but, and this may well be user error. But even if that's the case, I feel like the process is too complicated. When I go from using it on my phone to using it on my laptop inevitably I miss at least one message. Like somehow a message will get like, like sent to the old to the device I was on and somehow like I won't see it but it'll get there before I log out and then it won't show up on the new device. Or the, you know like if I go from like desk, laptop to phone and and I fully get that that may be you know my, my bad but um, so what? Maybe it's an issue. I haven't had it with mine. It's worked pretty well on yeah. all my devices. But I'll give you an example. Like, a, let's say a photo. I need to send it to my colleague. In Android, I can go from the gallery. I can select, you know, send it Hangouts, and it automatically sends it. In iOS, I have to physically back out of gallery, go into Hangouts, click the picture.
picture icon, click on the picture I want, and it hits send. And it sounds dumb, but when you do that 20, 20 times a day, it adds up pretty fast. What kind of same thing with Google Drive. What kind of pictures are you sending your uh, work colleagues? Pictures of sexy phones. Don't you know that you're married? I'm not married to any one phone. Okay. Um, I love all phones. All right, your turn. I feel like, oh yeah, you did ask me that question. Okay, next question. What are you most excited about? Thanksgiving, that's not really a yes or no question, but, you know, special Thanksgiving lightning around. Um, I am excited to be amongst family, both because it'll be nice to see them, and also because it'll be extra people to take care of my kids, so I don't have to take care of them the whole time. Um, I love my kids, but they're very tiring. Um, it's kind of like, hey, catch up with this family member, and then you run away. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited. Um, I'm excited for Pi. And the pumpkin pie. Yeah, and uh, and der- and my wife makes this derby pie that's to die for. Um, so yeah, I'm a, yeah, I'm just excited to have a nice uh, you know nice day with the family, eat some good food. Derby pie so good it must be from Kentucky. Uh. <laughs> all I got. Um. Okay, hit me. All right. Um. I had written this down somewhere, but I, of course I lost it. I never wrote mine down. So, I'm yeah. so this is my last one, right? Because I was two and three? Yeah. Okay. Um, one app. Name an app besides web browser, email, and calendar. That, like, if you could only have one other app on your phone, what would it be? Twitter. That was fast. Yeah, I use Twitter all the time, every day. But you know you could just get to Twitter through the web browser. Yeah, but it's not as good of an experience. All right, what like what client apps. what you what client do you use? I use and hate me as much as you want to, but I use the stock Twitter app. Yeah, that's not acceptable. Yeah, what do you use? Uh, the other one. Okay, which one? Um, you know the one. I think the it's called. Co- I think it's Tweetbot. No. You mean Twitter robot? No. I don't. You mean Tide Sport? I mean Tweetbot. No, I mean Tweetbot. Okay. I like to play dumb. I, just have to I like to play dumb, but actually I'm smart. Uh, yeah. Um, you know what? Like do you know what I like about Tweetbot, which is a recent thing, and not at all why I bought it, but it's just turned out to be a benefit, that? is that uh, I'm pretty sure it's still this way. Tweetbot doesn't show hearts. It show, still shows stars. Oh, just, hey, stars. Yeah. Favorite. Yeah. Cool. I um, still use Tweetdeck on my browser on my computer. Nice. Love it. Yeah. Does that okay. still run in uh, Adobe Air? Yes. <laughs> I believe so. That's great. That's great. Third question for Noah. What's the thing you're doing? Nah, it's not exciting. Let me, let me think. Let me think again. Let me flip that question back to you. Apps. <laughs> <Your one> app. <laughs> Uh, if I can only Lightning have round. one other app, it would be Spotify. Ah, uh, I forgot about Spotify. That's right. Let me let me go back. Nope. And make that nope. My app. You don't care about the arts. No, I use Spotify You're every day. You're a cold too. business machine. No, I use Spotify every day too for my running playlist. You like Rick Astley playlist, playlist number one. Rick Astley playlist number two. No, it's literally country and Bobby Brown. Rick Roll special number three. Yeah, I leave my Rick Rolls for special occasions. Spotify hey, what um, what's Aaron's favorite dish at the Japanese sushi restaurant? Miso soup. Rick roll. Oh goodness. Hey um, what's uh Aaron's favorite appetizer at the uh, Chinese Sichuan restaurant? Yeah. Rick roll. Oh, you're so funny. What is uh, what's Aaron's favorite um, appetizer at the Vietnamese Vietnamese food restaurant? No, summer roll. Oh, man. Ah. I thought I had you. No, why? I'm thought cagey. I had you. Hey, hang on one second. Oh, sorry, what? Who are you talking to? Oh, no one. That's no, just my cat. Okay, then. All right, anything else uh, you want to tell the people? Yeah, I think that's it. I think we got to get, get Thanksgiving passed and then get excited about episode four. Coming um. Up next week. Hey, there's some people. Uh, so uh, there's some people on the on the YouTubes 
who were like, hey man, how come, where's the video, man? And the answer is, um, not yet. About it. Not yet. But not yet. All right. Hey, you know what? Also, to those people that said, what was it, we're bosses at the basics or bringing it back to the basics? Well, we made basics cool, son, so there it is. Um, that. Yeah, that was, that was Aaron who said that, not me. No, we, you said that before we started. Too. Off the air. Well, what's off, off the air is on the air, right? No, man, you got to have, you know, you can see how it's I get... the internet world. We're online 24 hours a day. Dude, I, I got nothing. like you should sign us out this time. All right. Um, on behalf of the unsponsored crew, the East Coast crew, the West Coast crew, the East Texas crew, and... Wait, um, the East Coast crew, do we hire people? The Canadian crew. Oh, we hired Canadians, too. Um, I'm, so, I'm failing here. I'm causing issues. Sorry. Hey, Noah, why don't you sign us off? Because hey, you'll just job. talk through the whole thing, Aaron. No, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm right, sorry. Good point. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. Thanks for listening. Uh, we'll be back next week. And, um, you know.